So for over two months, conversations, listening sessions, experts weighing in after Fairview and Sanford announced plans to combine forces and create one of the biggest rural and urban health systems in our country. That plan would directly impact thousands of patients and providers across our state, and it has brought up a lot of questions and concerns we've talked about on this show. So Kent went to northern Minnesota yesterday in order to take those issues directly to the people who want to make this happen, the CEOs of Sanford and Fairview. Kent? Yeah, Jana, the attorney general says he needs more time to investigate this merger to look closer at the potential impact on patients, competition, and even taxpayers, considering Fairview's relationship with the University of Minnesota. Speaking of that, the U of M has announced its own hope to go it alone in all of this, and its physicians and medical students have become some of the most vocal critics of Sanford's interests as a company based in the Dakotas. So there was a lot to talk about. Let's just talk a little bit about culture and politics. These are two nonprofits coming from two different states that have ideological differences right now. And that has been politicized through gender affirming care and abortion care, reproductive care. There have been a lot of questions raised about what happens to that kind of care if this merger goes through. What do you want to say about that? So today, the gender affirming care, the uh, abortion care and the abortion services that are provided today in the state of Minnesota, those are gonna continue. They will remain unchanged as a result of this merger. Don't take my word for it, uh, but what we've committed is the bylaws for the new organization will expressly uh, state that as well so that nobody can be concerned that uh, there ends up being some sort of a corporate policy uh, where you have you know people sitting in a corporate headquarters deciding what type of care is provided. Yeah. Sanford CEO Bill Gasson and Fairview CEO James Hereford say they understand the concerns and have spent weeks visiting some of the hospitals and clinics impacted by the potential merger to address fears about everything from care to union contracts. Sanford Health has long had unionized workforces in Minnesota and we will continue to honor and respect those collective bargaining agreements post-merger. Last night in Grand Rapids, they made their final public plea for combining Sanford, the nation's largest rural health care provider, with Fairview's 11 metro hospitals at a critical time. Over half the care delivery systems in this country lost money in this last year, including ours. There is no returning to a status quo. Together, we can improve the experience and support for our patients and providers and employees in a way that neither Fairview nor Sanford can do alone. Let me ask you about better care. There's a lot of literature out there that's looked into mergers <clears throat> saying that costs tend to go up and care stays the same or declines. Why would this be any different than that? No one should argue that a merger by itself is going to yield anything. Higher costs, lower costs, higher quality, etc. Because it also takes a dedication to actually achieving those things, an intent. That's part of why, you know, I think this combination makes so much sense to me is that if you look at what drives Fairview and what drives Sanford in terms of improving quality, improving safety, driving down cost structures, m creating a better patient experience, that intent is there. How should Minnesotans feel confident in a merger going forward when the status of one of those potential partners seems to appear that they want out. The conversation around the university and its future that it has charted has absolutely nothing to do with the merger between Sanford Health and Fairview Health Services. We're open to any and all possibilities. We just think it'd be a shame if we can't work out some relationship because every academic in the country needs to be associated with a care delivery system either of its own creation or through some other relationship, because you can't be the ivory tower on the hill. But the university's indecision around what it is it wants to do and how it wants to proceed should in no way, shape, or form hold back the independent nature of Fairview and Sanford from going forward and charting our course. But it's not just the university looking to slow things down. We would not have asked for more time if we didn't need it. The attorney general's office has repeatedly called for the organizations to delay their March 31st target date. What is your response to the attorney general saying this needs more time? With all due respect 
Uh, I know it seems like there's a lot of time for other people as it relates to bringing the two organizations together, but what we do every single day is life and death. And our ability to be able to continue to do that and to do that in a sustainable way into the future is critical. So every day that we delay bringing the organizations together is another day for missed opportunity. Now, regardless of that sense of urgency, both CEOs admit the March 31st date is just a target, and they say they will take the time needed to answer all of the AG's concerns. In the meantime, that vocal opposition is also continuing. U of M medical students are planning a rally against the merger on Friday. Jana. And they're not the only ones, Kent. We've heard from some of the experts who talked about in the meeting say, whoa, whoa, whoa. We've heard from nurses associations. We've heard from a lot of what we would call somewhat regular people saying, let's slow down. You were at the meeting last night. What were you hearing from the public? You know, we heard things on both sides. And really, to be fair, there have been people who have been uh, who have seen the benefits of Sanford moving in and say Bemidji. And there have been a lot of people that lined up at those meetings. But there are a lot of people essentially saying, why wouldn't we slow down to get this right? That's what it seemed to the sentiment that we heard over and over again, because there are so many people that are impacted by what happens. All good points. Thanks so much, Kent. We appreciate it.